All right, moving on. It's been uh, hard to escape hearing about GameStop lately and this whole army of small investors that managed to at least shake big investors and hedge funds a bit. Curious to see just how precedented or unprecedented this is. So joining us now to talk about it, the president of Heritage Capital LLC, Paul Schatz. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, it, it seems like this is being portrayed as sort of a David versus Goliath story with the Davids being the small investors rooting for GameStop to do well and the Goliaths being these billionaire hedge funds rooting for it to fail. How accurate is that of a basic picture? Tim, if I gave you this, <clears throat> excuse me, as a movie theme, you'd say, oh my gosh, this is amazing. What a great story. I mean, clearly it could never have happened, but <clears throat> it sounds like a great story. I think on the surface, what you said has merit. There is an element of Davy versus Goliath, David versus Goliath. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, the problem with the red, I don't see the problem, it's not fair. It's great that we've got millions of new people involved in the markets. However, we don't know who anybody is. So while there are tons of individual investors trading, the problem is there are also likely some big money people who have the opposite position of other hedge funds, and they're trying to goose the individual investor on. So I'm definitely skeptical that it's just David versus Goliath, because that'd be fantastic. I mean, we always talk about the markets being in, in favor of big money, the big hedge funds, the big pensions, and now it's it shifted a little bit. But people should be careful, because there, those anonymous people on Reddit uh, clearly are not all who they say they are. And what this has forced a lot of people who don't know stocks to do is learn about what shorting stocks are. How can you explain that in a fairly user-friendly way? A question I've gotten off a lot in the last month. When you buy a stock, you own a share, and you, I'll use the word hope, but hope's not an investment strategy. You want to see the share price go up. The exact opposite of buying a stock is shorting a stock because you are effectively selling a share you don't own and hoping the stock goes down so you can buy that back. So if you own IBM, you buy it low, hopefully you sell it high. If you short IBM, you short it high and hopefully you buy it back low. They're the exact opposites. A lot of these people that were sort of ganging up using Reddit and the app Robinhood were trying to put the squeeze on a lot of these people who were shorting the stock. How did that work? That's right. It's called a short squeeze. Perfectly legal. So there's nothing illegal about what happened. It's happened for decades and decades and hundreds of years. The, there, it's public information what percent of a company's stock is shorted. So there's shares out there in the public domain, and anybody can can buy can can short stock. You have to go to your broker, you have to borrow it, pay an interest rate, and you can short some stock. What happened was, it seems like one individual person who became is now is this big hero on Reddit. Good for him. He accumulated if he did it legally, he accumulated tens of millions of dollars. What he did was. He's been talking about buying GameStop since 2019. This is not new. GameStop was under $3 last April. GameStop started going up, up, up with poor fundamentals. People are likening it to, you know, Blockbuster. But as it got going in price, hedge funds started betting more heavily and more heavily and more heavily against it. So that at one point, 100% of I don't want to be wonky, but let's just say a record amount of people were playing against GameStop. People were big money, was anticipating the stock going down. This Reddit army, if you take it at face value, words spread like wildfire. This message boards like the dot-com bubble, and they all started buying the stock, and they drove it. You know, it, was, it went from three to roughly 20, and then very quickly, 20 to 40 in a couple of days, then 40 to 80 in a day, and then 80 to almost 500 in a couple of days. So literally, it melted straight up, and that's when the problems occurred. 
and we will get more into that. I, I think what a lot of people want to know, and I, we don't have a lot of time here, this kind of uh, short squeeze, you said it's happened before. Is it more likely to happen in the future given people's access to easy, relatively commission-free trading with apps like Robinhood? Short squeeze are nothing new. There, there are plenty of newsletters out there 20, 30 years old that tell you how to find stocks that are have heavy short, it's called short interest. But I would say this, I'm really worried that this has become national news. I mean, Liz Warren, I mean, when you have Liz Warren, Ted Cruz, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez all wrapped together in an issue, it is a populist and public outrage. And there's and, and, and there are so many complex parts to it. It's going to happen again. I caution individual investors. The next time you hear about a GameStop, and perhaps it's another stock, be very careful. I don't believe you'll see a repeat of what you had today, because I think the market forces, I think the hedge funds and smart money are going to be much more careful next time, perhaps more devious. What we don't need is we don't need to tax this to change. That's the proposal. Let's tax this. Short selling is absolutely needed in the market. It provides more money, more players, more liquidity. It helps us as individual investors get better executions. What we need to do is level the playing field. So we, if you own 5% of a company, you must disclose it publicly. We don't have the same thing on the short side. That should be number one from the SEC. 5% short, own, short sales, you should have to disclose it publicly. Let's not put the individual investor down here and keep smarter, quote unquote, hedge funds up here. Because frankly, in the last year, the individual investor has kicked the butt of the big investor. And that that's OK. I mean, the hedge funds are smarting, licking their wounds. But if you follow the trail of money, Tim, on this, at least in my opinion, and I don't have all the facts, but it smells a little ew. A little ew. Good. That means we got to get you back on to talk about why it doesn't quite work. But uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. Paul Schatz from Heritage Capital LLC, thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Tim.